Hello everyone and welcome to your linear algebra review on how elementary row operations affect the determinant. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. So uh, in the previous videos we discussed how to calculate the determinant and one of the things that I, that I mentioned was you want to pick a row or column with the most amount of zeros, right? That's typically um, the easiest way to calculate the determinant because it cancels out a bunch of terms. Uh, in fact, with, with that idea in mind, we can actually see how we can use elementary row operations to get more zeros in our matrix and therefore make calculating the determinant easier. Okay, so remember there are three elementary row operations and each of them affects the determinant in different ways. So let me kind of just run through them real quick. Um, so say, say you started with some matrix A, like we have here, right? We start with some matrix A. So if you get matrix B, um, so if you obtain matrix B from matrix A by swapping two rows, then let's see how that affects the determinant, okay? So all I'm saying is I, I started with my matrix A, I swapped any two rows, and now I have the matrix B. What does the determinant of B look like now with respect to the determinant of A? Well, what this does is it just sort of negates it. So the determinant of B is now the negative of the determinant of A. So it swaps the sign for the determinant of A. Okay? So that's what, what swapping rows does. It flips the sign of the determinant. Okay, what other row operations do we know? So if B is obtained from A, by, I'm just going to kind of move that down there so I don't have to keep rewriting it, um, by multiplying um, row, I'm not going to specify a row, but some row, a row of A by some scalar, which I will call alpha. So say you multiply row 13 of matrix A by some scalar alpha, okay? How is that going to affect the determinant? Well, the determinant of B is going to be alpha times the determinant of A. So if you multiply um, the determinant by some scalar alpha, then the determinant gets multiplied by that scalar alpha. Okay. So if I take my, my, my matrix and I multiply row 2 by, by 7, then I have to multiply the determinant of my matrix by 7. And then the last row operation that we know, uh, same thing, I'm just going to kind of bring all this stuff down. So if B is obtained from A by adding a multiple of one row to another, oops, to another, to another, this one's really cool, um, nothing happens the determinant of B just equals the determinant of A. So this is a really powerful one. This third one where you can add multiples of one row to another row is a very powerful row operation when calculating the, the determinant. Because as long as you keep consistent with that, um, as long as you keep consistent with that, then, then the determinant that you, you get for your final matrix is just the determinant of the beginning. So if you do this third option of adding a multiple of one row to another uh, several times over and over again until you get a bunch of zeros in your matrix, and now your matrix is easier to calculate, the determinant of your matrix is easier to calculate, well, the determinant of that easier matrix will be the same as the determinant of your starting matrix. So that, that's where the real use of this comes from. So let's break this down. Let's apply these ideas to our matrix here. So we're trying to calculate the determinant of A, and how we're going to do it is we're going to do some row operations to get our matrix A into upper triangular form. So for every row operation we do, we wanna keep track of how it's going to affect our determinant. Okay? So we're starting over here with matrix A. One, two, one. Okay, so basically to get it in upper triangular form, I'm going to be going through the usual process of, of getting into reduced row echelon form. I'm just not gonna go all the way. So my first step would be, I want a one in the top left, 
And I can get that by, by swapping two rows. So swapping row one with row two. Two, zero, one. Okay, I'll, I'll go back through all of these row operations um, once I'm done and see how it has affected the determinant. So, so we'll come back to it. Uh, my next steps are to get zeros beneath it, right? So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do this in two, in two steps, row two minus three row ones and row three minus two row ones. Kind of going through this a little, a little faster because we, we've done um, a good portion of, of, of this kind of work um, with getting a matrix into reduced or echelon form. The next, I want a one in the middle position. And then the last step is I want a zero in the, the bottom middle position. So I'm gonna take row three plus four row twos. Cool, and that's what we have currently. Oops, sorry, I messed up that negative there. That's a negative one, right? So this should be three. Beauty. Okay, so we've done all these row operations to get our matrix into upper triangular form. Now, why getting it into upper triangular form? What makes that so useful? Well, in fact, because of these double zeros down here, because of these double zeros, um, you're going to notice something very useful that happens. Once you have your matrix in upper triangular form, or even if you were, were to have it in lower triangular form, um, the determinant ends up just being the multiple, you, you multiply everything along the diagonal. That's how you can calculate the determinant. You can actually do it. You, you know, you can actually do the calculation, do the, the method for calculating the determinant. Right, remember what that method was? You, you pick a row or column that you like, and then you go through each element, you, you get your cofactor expansion, that, that whole thing that we talked about in the previous video. But if you were to actually go through the whole process, you would see that the determinant is equal to just multiplying along the diagonal. Okay, so the determinant of this matrix, I'm gonna call this matrix B, and I'm gonna call this matrix A. So the determinant of B ends up just being one times one times three. So it's three. Okay, this is a very, this is a very useful tactic. If you can get a matrix into upper triangular or lower triangular form, then the determinant is just multiplying along the diagonal. Okay, so the determinant of this matrix is B, uh, is three. How do we find the determinant of A from this? Well, let's see what row operations we did along the way. Okay, so we uh, swapped two rows. So whatever the determinant of this matrix is, it would be negative the determinant of A, right? That's the one we talked about earlier. If you swap two rows, you, you negate the determinant. Uh, what do we do in this step? Well, in this step, we just added multiples of one row to another. How does that affect the determinant again? Oh, well, remember that affects it by um, not doing anything. Right, that was that third option that we were talking about. So it doesn't change the determinant. So if the determinant of this one is negative determinant of A, the determinant of this one is also negative determinant of A. And then what do we do? We multiply by negative one fifth. And how does that affect our determinant? Well, that multiplies the determinant by negative one fifth. So the negative one fifth and the negative out front here cancel out. So we're at one fifth determinant of A. And then what was our last step here? Again, we added a multiple of one row to another. So that does not affect the determinant. So the determinant of this final matrix, which equals three, should equal one fifth determinant of A. If we kept track of it along the way, this bottom one, this last one we got to, should equal one fifth determinant of A. So since this equals three, if we multiply the five over, we get that determinant of A equals positive 15. So that's how, that's how elementary row operations can be used to calculate the determinant um, quickly. And in some cases, it might just be easier to just calculate the determinant. Like maybe if you just started calculating the determinant from the very beginning, you would have gotten 15 faster. Um, but in, in larger matrices, four by fours, five by fives, it's often easier to try to simplify the matrix down first 
and then calculate the determinant and keep track of which row operations you did along the way. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Um, let me just X this out. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. So if you want more information on the tutoring services we have available on all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu. If you want more videos like this one that go over specific concepts from your course, or maybe you want to see what upcoming review sessions we have for the exams in your course, go ahead and check out this link below. Uh, thank you all again, and have a fantastic day.